folks, welcome to another episode of Tiffin Box TV. I speak with photography industry leaders who make it a habit of inspiring others, bridging craft and commerce to help you create a sustainable and creative business. I'm so excited. Today's guest is Jenica McDavid, who publishes an astounding blog called Psychology Photographers. Let me repeat that, Psychology for Photographers. <laughs> she helps photographers understand their clients. I mean, that is like the biggest challenge I think photographers these days face. So let's jump right into it. Jenica, thank you so much for joining me today. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. You know, one of the things that we struggle with, and I was, you know, as I was thinking about, like, how do I, how do I talk about what you're launching on November 1st uh, in a way that makes sense? And I think of, as a photographer, uh, and I've met so many of them, there, there are two fears, two real big fears. One is being photographed themselves, which they have to... <laughs> Right. They, they, they usually go, oh, not me. I always like to be uh, behind the camera, they say. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The second thing I think I've found is they hate writing about themselves. They hate writing or they f- struggle with coming up with things to write about either themselves or how they help their clients. I think ultimately that's what you know, they're trying to do with their photography, but they have to verbalize it. And mm-hmm. they struggle with that, right? Do you agree? Yeah. Do you agree oh, yeah. I see all the time. That's why we're here to talk about it because I think it's important to do. But yeah, it's scary. It's hard. I, I, I completely get it. Uh, but there's so, things we can do. <laughs> yeah, indeed. So one of the things you you teach people through your blog, which is, as I said, it's beautiful. It's, it's so useful. Uh, if anybody who is who hasn't even heard of psychology for photographers, I would be so surprised because it's such a popular blog, number one. Uh, number two, it's useful. Number, If you read a blog post, you can just dive into it, really understand a quick little lesson and go to put a use right to, right away in your business. I mean, that's I think that's your goal. And you, that's the goal. You mm-hmm. accomplish it so beautifully. Um, what is it that you would say to somebody who is either starting out who's been established for a long time, has a just a wonderful business, but still struggles to connect with clients. What would you say their first step should be? Well, I think that you kind of hinted at earlier when you said photographers don't like being photographed. We sort of use our camera as a security blanket and we want to use our blog to show a window of clients, not ourselves. But here's the thing you have to remember. Clients experience very similar fears that you do when you step in front of a camera. And not only that, but they also pile on top of it is the fear that what if I hire the wrong person? What if they don't show up? You know, stuff like that. What if um, it's not a good personality fit for me? What if what if they're a good photographer, but I just don't like the images because I'm self-conscious about how I look? What if my kids don't behave? I mean, there's a whole list. Oh, you got it. (laughs) Um, And so what talking about yourself achieves is you have a chance to show them I get it. Because if you can explain to them that you understand it and you experience similar things or that you have seen this and here is how you're going to solve that specific concern that they have, it's going to do so much more than simply saying, I take photographers that help people remember their family moments. Because because they can take photos to help remember moments. Like they can do that. We We all have iPhones. And you introduce a level of art, certainly, and you allow them to be in the photo, certainly, but they still have those fears that we just talked about. So if, you, if you're only relying on your, on your art, which is amazing, and your ability to get them in the photo, which is also critical, I'm not diminishing the importance of that at all. If, if, if all you're doing is relying on that, you're counting on them to overcome the rest of those fears themselves. So, so what I think is that when people hesitate to talk about themselves, they, they hesitate because they feel like, oh, this is egotistical. Um, you know, I'm just, I'm going to, I'm going to be that person at the dinner party, just like talking about themselves. No, it's a compassionate thing to do. Awesome. It's compassionate. Awesome. So what would the, give me some examples. Perhaps you can uh, look at my website at the, sure. at this time and, and sort of maybe even tear it down and say, Hey, these would be better options for you. Um, you know, this is probably the third thing that photographers fear the most is, having somebody critique their work, critique their website. You know, I think mm-hmm. people, I think, p- want the, the, the feedback, but they're afraid of what they may hear, hear back, I guess. Uh, and so a lot of people I've heard 
from who will say, oh, I, I've thought about starting a blog, but I've never really gotten into it. Or they'll say, oh, I really need to make changes to my website, but it's never happened because I've been just so busy. I mean, that's the usual, you know, the excuses. I'm busy. I can't do it. Uh, but what's really going on is that they're just afraid to put themselves out there and get the mm -hmm. feedback, make changes and evolve really more than anything else it, because the web is such a organic thing. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is an opinion that I have. I feel it can constantly change. I mean, like my website has changed several times. Uh, and mm -hmm. I feel like, you know, after I take your course, I'm going to change it again. Right. Yeah. I hope so. I mean, yeah. I mean, that's the whole goal, right? <laughs> right? Uh, to, yeah. to do better tomorrow. Uh, so that tell us a little bit about what you would you tell photographers who are nervous about just even getting started you know what would you say sure well so one mistake people make i think is that they come to their website and they don't have a focus for what they're trying to achieve what you're trying to achieve it's like a job interview you're you're putting information out there you're paying attention to who's interviewing you virtually who's interviewing you what do they need to know and can I lay out my resume in a sense so that I'm addressing all of their concerns? So when I help people write, this is a separate thing, but when I help people write cover letters for jobs, we go through, we read the job description, then we pick out all of the things about your life. If they say they need someone who has experience in this specific thing, now we're going to tell a story about how you did that specific thing and were successful because you're helping that people overcome their fear that they're going to hire someone and they're not going to do the job, right? It's the same thing with your website. I think where people feel overwhelmed and like put off working on their site is that they're not sure what they're there to accomplish. You're there to address the concerns that your specific client has. And all of the courses I teach start with here is your focus, get to know your client. I give specific ways to do that. And now let's tailor everything there. And it's so much faster when you have that clarity for exactly what you're trying to achieve. So that's first. Um, second, you, you mentioned just the fear of being critiqued. I get that. We all get that. There's, there's this, especially for artists because our work is so personal to us it has to do with the way we see the world mm -hmm. when someone critiques our work it's it feels like they're critiquing you because it's the way you see the world this is you've poured so much effort into it um one of the things i talk about in the class though is that your your personal value and your work are separate things <laughs> and we hear that a lot but that's a really tough thing to internalize um but i think that especially if you think of your website as something that is just the information about me that helps someone else feel calm about hiring me, it makes it a lot easier to, to shift things around because it doesn't feel like I'm coming into your personality and saying you need to be better. It's, oh, I just need to communicate this better. So I hope that, I hope that helps. Uh, do you want me to give a specific example? I mean, you're being brave and you're letting me look at your site here. Please do, please do. <laughs> Which, first of all, um, I think it's great that you have a headshot of yourself right on your about page. Not everybody does that good for you. Um, so I think that your about page, so this is by the way, seishuphotography.com that I'm looking at. Um, I think that you do a wonderful job of relating to your client already that you are the father of two boys and this is a family photography site. And you mention the feelings that you felt when your kids were born and you suspect that your clients are like that too. So that's that's, that's a great start because already you're establishing, look, I get it. Like we're, we're on the same page here. Now, what I would recommend for you is to take it a step further. So this is a, one of those counterintuitive things. The more specific you get, the more universal you become. Okay. So wow. the reason people hesitate to tell a specific story. So for example, you could pick, you could think of a moment that stands out vividly in your mind from the day that your first or second son was born and and find something in there that you know your client can relate to and then instead of just saying i recall the first few days after their birth filled with awe you know you're you're sort of adding a level of abstraction there because you're trying to summarize mm -hmm. don't summarize go into a specific single moment that shows us you feeling that sense of mystery and confusion. Because when a client can put themselves in that situation, not only are they seeing you in that situation, but they are also simultaneously thinking of that same moment that they experienced when they were holding their son. So if you can give concrete details there about 
when they, I don't know what your, what your moment would be. Maybe it was the moment they put your older son in your arms. Maybe it would be, you know, watching your son through the window as, you know, the doctor cleaned them up, whatever it might be. Sure. Put them in just one specific moment and you'll, you'll get across all of those universal emotions. Um, and it's more memorable because it's concrete. Awesome. So awesome. that's, that's one part of it. Um, another part is, um, sometimes people, um, and I'm not suggesting this for you, but other people want to take the approach with their about page that they want to have like a backstory because they have something about their life that really brought them to this moment. Mm -hmm. And a tip I have for those people is if you have a story, um, let's say that you were, um, let's pick a, a general, like you were in a corporate job, but you had been doing photography for a long time and you decided to make the leap. Um, that's a great story. Again, you want to be as specific as possible, first of all. like sh Instead of just saying, oh, I started out in a corporate world and I hated my job, show us sitting at your desk on a, a, you know, a Monday at 2 p.m. and you're like, oh, my gosh, I have another week of this. Oh, and then pivot to afterward, right. you have a camera in your hands and you're experiencing this joy. Like Get it as concrete as possible as you can really picture it. Second, if you're telling a story, this is something I learned actually from studying film, Every scene needs to have a little bit of conflict in it. And people think of conflict as a negative thing. And that's not why I'm saying like, you're not trying to like be negative on your about page, <laughs> but you have to show what was something you were up against. Sure. sure. So if you just say, oh, I did this thing and it was wonderful. And then I am here and it's wonderful. Show us just a little bit. What were you up against? What was a little bit scary that you had to overcome? Because that's what pulls people in. Like if you watch a movie where everything Indeed. is going fine and it just yeah. progresses and the hero experiences no adversity, it's boring. You're not going to want to watch that movie. Right. But if you have just a little bit of adversity that people are going to keep reading because they're like, oh, I have to see how they overcome it. Right. So that's that's just a little tip if you have more of a, a backstory type of about page. Let me let me throw you a curveball now. I have three websites, no, four websites uh, catering to four different genres of people, genres of industry, I guess. Uh, headshots and weddings and, of course, this mm -hmm. family uh, website. And then there's Tiffin Box as well. What do you suggest for someone who has multiple websites? Would you suggest, you know, starting from scratch for each one and creating a an about page that's specific to each one of those brands? Is that what you would recommend? I would, because again, think of it as a job interview. If you're interviewing for five different jobs with five different companies, my guess is you're still the same person, but you're going to highlight a little bit of a different thing for every one of those job interviews based on what that person needs to hear and the specific tasks they're hiring you for. So it would be smart to behave a little bit differently in every job interview. And um, I have a free class called um, Writing About Yourself So Clients Will Listen. Yes. And maybe you can link to that. But this this will be like an easy way to see that. So at the end of the class, you learn how to write a three-line bio. So like if you have to have a little bio to put at the bottom of a blog post, for example. Um, and what you do is you set it up, you, you list a whole bunch of information about yourself. And then I show you how to take that information and pull out different pieces based on the different person you're talking to. This doesn't have to be hard. And in fact, I actually think it ne it makes it easier. It probably sounds daunting, like I have to write five different about pages. That sounds awful. <laughs> but actually, it's easier because, again, you have that focus. Yeah. You know who you're talking to. That's right. And it becomes much clearer. I think the biggest, pe the biggest um, obstacle people have when they write one about page is that they're trying to talk to everybody at once. And you can't do that. Like you can't, <laughs> you can't have a conversation with six people at the same time. So if you if you have like a really clear goal with each person, it actually makes it way easier. Awesome. Well, that's phenomenal. I love I love the quick little tips of you know we've just heard today. Uh, what's coming on November first, Janica? I have a new class coming out called Irresistible You, and I wrote this class because I have been getting emails for years, people saying I hate writing my about page. I don't feel like my website communicates who I am. When I go to blog, I don't know what to say, so I just kind of like here's the photos. Um, and it's a, it's a sticking point for people and it wastes time. And I'm a huge advocate for efficiency and I hate it when people waste time. I hate it when I waste time. So knowing how to write about yourself makes blogging more efficient. It makes writing your website more efficient. It helps you get clients who are better suited for you because they know what they're coming to you for. Um, and the course covers things like 
I call them the it girl secrets to dominating the internet. You see people out there who are really, really, really good at getting people in and you think, oh, I'm, I'm just not a cool person and you have to be cool to be good at this. That's not true. There's some specific things that those people are doing that you can do too, even if you're an introvert like I am. Um, I also talk about six different types of blog posts that you can fill with your own content over and over. It makes it so much easier than starting from scratch every time. Awesome. And I also have one quick thing at the end called the never ending content generator, which is something you create for yourself so you can have personal content and never run out of ideas. Phenomenal. Wow. And this launches on November 1st. Yeah. November 1st through November 10th. It'll be a special launch price. Yep. Excellent. Very cool. And you know, all of this ties together with the idea that uh, we've talked about already that you know the photographers uh, are are nervous wrecks sometimes writing about these things and, and at the end of the day if you're not messaging your clients in a way that brings them on board you mm -hmm. are going to be struggling you're going to be failing at at this this lovely industry that we have so why not make it a success why not learn how to do it right right i mm -hmm. mean it's as simple as that i mean you just figure out what makes all of this work? And uh, Jetica, what we should probably rewind just a tad bit and tell people your qualifications. What is it? That, I know you you don't want to talk about your qualifications, but <laughs> I have to I have to make it a make it make it known. I mean, all of this comes from uh, a great amount of learning that you've committed to. First and foremost, I think that's uh, that's that needs to be known. I mean, I think people need to know like how, you're not you're not making this stuff up. You know, you're yeah. you've you've come from a, a a phenomenal program where you've learned psychology, you've you've studied it, you've you've made it your thing. Um, so tell us a little bit of, a little bit about what you've studied. Perhaps that would also convince people to jump on board. Sure, I have a, an undergraduate degree from Yale University, and the major has a very intimidating sound as behavioral neuroscience. But I basically studied cognition. How do people make decisions? Love how it. do people take information from the environment in and what do they do with it and how does it change their behavior? And then I went to graduate school and I studied both clinical and community psychology. So I learned all kinds of aspects about how people socialize and interact with the environment and all of this stuff. And I found as I did all, as I studied this and as I started my own photography business, that as I was working with clients, I was using everything I had learned about psychology and about how people interact in the world. And that's why I write my blog because there's all this information locked up in academic literature that no one wants to read because it's really boring. <laughs> it's really dry. <laughs> um, and I want to make it accessible to people because the conclusions make your life so much easier. I am all about small tools that make a lot of things easier. And so that is what this class is trying to do and um, what the blog tries to do as well. If you can just understand a few things about people, a lot of things become a lot easier. Fantastic. Wow. Uh, I, if you haven't already figured this out, I'm in love with psychology of photographers. I think it's a, it's the blog that every photographer should be reading on a, on a weekly basis. Uh, so make it a book market, folks. Uh, you want to be there. And I will have links to the free uh, course that you mentioned and also uh, the links to the new course that's coming on November 1st through November 10th. It's going to, there's a fairly uh, small window uh, where mm -hmm. you are offering this at a, a special discounted price and then, then it goes up to whatever it needs to be, right? Um, so I will be in touch with everybody about this. Uh, stay in touch. Thanks, Jenica. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.